In this video, we're going to continue on with conditions. We're going to add another Boolean operator. And we're going to talk about some strategies in managing the code we're writing as the conditions get more complex. In the last version of the dice game we saw, there were three conditions for winning. The user guesses exactly. The user guesses the dice roll minus one. The user guesses the dice roll plus one. In order to make sure that my logic worked in all three of those cases, I had to keep writing in the input box and clicking submit. As the conditions for winning or any other state of our game become more complicated, this is going to quickly become unwieldy. We need some strategies around how to test the conditions that we're creating uh, given some data. If it's not immediately clear why I would need to control the data inside my program, let's take the example of a game with 20-sided dice instead of 6-sided dice. For the three conditions that I need to satisfy that I want to test in my game, how many guesses would I need to make in order to verify the behavior of each of these three conditions? I changed the code in my game to reflect the 20-sided dice. However, that's not the point of this whole exercise. The point of this exercise is to be able to control the input parameters to my game, to the logic of my game, in order to see the output behavior that I'm expecting. So what I'm going to do in the dice roll function is use the return keyword to always return the same value. Return keyword will end the execution of the function early. And this way, I'll always know that when I roll a dice, it'll be a six. Let's look at this in the browser. Now, whenever I click the submit button, I always roll six. And this allows me to test all of my conditions easily. If I guess five, then I win. If I guess six, then I win. And if I guess seven, I also still win. Next, we'll see a point of the conditional syntax that we've been using all along. That's part of the underlying JavaScript data types, and that's Boolean values. So far, we've seen two distinct data types in JavaScript. One is numbers. So for an integer, uh, it's some value between negative 9 to the 15th to positive 9 to the 15th. Uh, we've seen strings, which are combinations of alphanumeric characters, uh, anywhere from one character to around 9 to the 15th characters. And these data types are defined by the kinds of operations we can do on them. So for math, we can do things like multiply together these number values. And for strings, we can combine strings together. The third data type that we're going to talk about is Boolean values. And these are the representation of true and false inside the JavaScript language. So they look like this. One of the values, one of the Boolean values is true. The other one is false. And so I typed in the words true and false, but notice how they don't have quote marks around them. So these are not strings. These are Boolean values. And so we can do math operations on numbers and we can put strings together with the plus sign. Uh, what kind of operations can we do with Boolean values? Well, uh, the kinds of operations we can do are the same ones that we've been doing inside of our if statements. So one equal to one. And the result of this operation is a JavaScript Boolean value. And so just like we can capture the result of a math operation inside of a variable, we can also capture the results of a Boolean operation inside of a variable. So in this case, the value inside the variable is the value true. If we redo this statement, then in this case now, the value, the variable holds the value false. So the fact that each Boolean operation results in a Boolean value doesn't necessarily mean that we're changing the way that we construct our logic. But it can help us understand and break down a more complicated Boolean statement. 
So for example here, now I know that this, each of these individual Boolean expressions stands in for a true or false value. So I can think of each of these as either being true or false. And that's because of these equality operators right here. That also means that when we have another operation, like the OR operation, then this one also stands in for a true or false value. So the combination of this value and this value is evaluated with the OR. So true or true is true, false or true is true, false or false is false. Now we'll look at a second logical operator, the AND operator. In order to demonstrate the use of this operator, we're gonna create a new dice game. This one is going to have two dice instead of one. I'm going to begin with a new copy of the starter code. So I'm gonna go copy the URL of the repo and git clone. And name the folder. Now I can open it in VS Code. I've copied my dice roll function into my new script JS. Now let's talk about how we want the game to work. I said before that this game is going to have two dice instead of one. So in this first simple version, both the dice have to roll to the user guess in order for the user to win. So let's take a look at that pseudocode. So we might write the pseudocode for this game like this. If the user guess is equal to dice one and the user guess is equal to dice two. So Let's see what this would look like in the script JS. Let's create the representation of two dice by calling the dice roll function twice and capturing those values. Now let's console log these values. Now let's see this in the browser. Every time I hit the submit button, then I get two values. Now that I have data to work with, I can write my condition. So I'm gonna start with an empty condition and according to the pseudocode, what I want is if user guess is equal to dice one first. So user guess is input and dice one. And the second part, and the user guess is equal to dice two. So here we're gonna use the Boolean operator and, and that's two ampersands. So then the second part, user guess equal to dice two.
and then I'm going to put a console log. Now before, in order to test this, I had to keep guessing until I got the condition. Just like before, we can control the input and output by changing our dice roll function to always return the same value. Let's try this in the browser. I already know that my dice roll function only ever returns one, so I can guess one, and I know that I'll get to the winning state. And I see my console log that says win. I'm going to finish my program by, just like I did before, changing the value of my output value variable. Let's see this in the browser. Now when I guess one, I should see the message in the gray box.